I'm so excited. Ooh, while I flip in the snow. Say hi, Mike. We're going to tap some maple trees. <laughs> Come on. maple trees in order to get maple syrup and the best ones that you can tap are sugar maples. Um, I didn't actually do that much research to figure out if we have sugar maples. I'm pretty sure most of the maples that we have around here are red maples and they've all been planted. They're all pretty old. Uh, there's two down by the pavilion and four down by the chapel. Um, but we are predominantly in an oak hickory forest down here next to the Jackson Washington State Forest and all of this wooded land around camp is predominantly oak trees, which you can tap like just about any tree, but um, in order to get the sugar content and to get a really nice syrup, you're gonna have to tap like a ton more than you would from a maple tree. I got the bright idea last year to tap some trees because my father-in-law uh, used to t tap his maple trees in his forest for years and he actually gave me some of his old school taps. Um, but we've upgraded and uh, Mike got us this like plastic contraption that flows all the way down this tube and into the bucket. What, do you want me to say something or no? <laughs> do you oh, I've been filming this whole time. Hey, everybody. <laughs> it's maple syrup season at Pioca. <laughs> so how do we tap a tree, Mike? We got these beautiful maple trees down by the chapel. I'm gonna take a 5 16 inch drill bit. We got our tap set up into a five gallon bucket. You're just gonna kind of measure out where your tubing goes. Put your drill on. You're gonna drill it slightly upward so the sap will flow out. In one smooth motion, high speed, you're just gonna go. <laughs> and break the drill. Real experts over here. tapped last year on this tree. Oh, there is some sap in there. Oh. So it's February 22nd. Why are we tapping now? We've just come off of a, a week long big snowstorm here in Indiana. And uh, right now is the perfect time to tap our maple trees. Um, maple sap and sap in trees in general really only wants to flow when the daytime temperature gets above freezing, but the nighttime temperature still falls below freezing. So there's um, pressure that moves up in the trees as the sap starts to flow up when uh, those conditions are right. And we only have a few days or weeks throughout the year to be able to do that. Um, and once temperatures start steadily staying above uh, 50 degrees during the day and above freezing at night, the sap's really not flowing as well anymore and it's not as tasty and sweet. Hello, Lodge. Heading down to the pavilion. I think we need snowshoes. Bucket. Mike, how put out are you already from this project? <laughs> Mike says we're done. <laughs> Too cold. Oh. <laughs> All 
our shoes are soaked. Look at it. You can see the, the line. Look how much, what was that? Like two hours, three hours? That's kind of Yay, first checkup. This is the good one. Check out the sunrise this morning. So we're gonna check this town down uh, here by Lake. We're down by the Pavilion and Peace Garden. Mike said that this was overflowing yesterday, so let's check it out. And oh my gosh, we're basically full again. This is amazing. You see them dripping? Oh, look at it go! I'm gonna leave this here for a minute, but um, we'll go back and grab another bucket and we will switch this out and put this in the fridge um, to keep it cool until we are ready to filter it and then boil it down into sap. This could be a disaster. Oh my goodness, is that heavy? Oh my goodness, it filled the whole thing up. Foamy. <laughs> so we've collected all our sap and to save some energy, before boiling it down, we're gonna pull some of the water out with this crazy reverse osmosis system. So we've got our sap right from the trees in this bucket. It goes through this pump. It's gonna pressurize it up to like 100 PSI. Then it first goes just through this kind of regular filter that you might have in your house to pull out any particulates, any schmutz. <laughs> then it goes through these two reverse osmosis filters. It's gonna go through the one, then the next one, and pure water is gonna come out of this line, and that's just gonna go away. Huh. And then out of this line, we have concentrated maple sap. Amazing. If you taste this one over here, this is our concentrated sap. Mm, nice and sweet. Kind of tastes like a Tootsie Roll. <laughs> and this, this is just pure water coming off. Mm, so refreshing. <laughs> You can see the difference here between uh, unfiltered sap, which is a lot clearer, and the filtered stuff, which has gotten like, I don't know, percentage of water out, but it's definitely yellower. Ugh. Come on. Ah. Time to boil. What do you mean get some B-roll? Oh gosh, what, oh, is, boy. What, what are we doing here? Why did we choose a shallow pan? You don't know. <laughs> this so is a theme with us. So it'll evaporate? Yeah, it evaporates faster when it's got more surface area and it's not all just like- I'm just gonna say surface area. Yeah. So how are we gonna know when our sap is done boiling? Well, we've got a candy thermometer that's going to help us determine how high we need to get the temperature of the sap. And so um, most people who boil uh, maple sap try to get their sap to boiling point plus seven and a quarter or and a half degrees. And boiling point depends on your elevation. We're at about a thousand feet above sea level here in Jackson County. So we're looking at about mm, 210 degrees to 212 degrees. 212 is uh, the normal boiling point at sea level. Um, we'll add seven degrees to that. And then uh, we'll just kind of monitor with the um, the thickness of the syrup as well as the color. A lot of people say that they know when maple syrup is done by its color. So um, what we really don't want to do is burn it because <laughs> then that would take like waste all the work that we've done. So we are watching this very closely all day today. We've been simmering now for mm, I don't know like 30 minutes to an hour and we've got all this foam that is developing on top that we're going to skim off in a second. Oh, look at it wrinkle. Oh yeah, get rid of that. 
cleared away most of the foam and now we need to add a bit more of this syrup. You can see like a very obvious change in coloration. This is a lot lighter and this is getting a lot darker. We're getting there. Mike's trying to figure out the sugar content of our sap, which has been uh, now all added to the pan. Look at the color change. Um, and this needs to continue to boil down. We've got a ways to go. Okay, we're getting ready for phase two of boil. We skimmed down all this gross stuff off the top. We are starting to boil our jars to can, and we have now got our second pot going to get the final stage of sap completely boiled down. Ooh. Okay. Well, I'm gonna cool it off. Don't, bl do not blow right over. <laughs> This has reduced by like half and we gotta get it to around 217 to be done. This is like your prime time of day and this is when I'm tired. As long as you're really gonna get my arthritis going. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now what? What do we decide on the funnel? I don't know, we wait. Yeah, just dip it, it'll be fine. Is this getting anywhere? We, I need this to be more foamy. Okay. Foamy! That's the foam we want to be able to know that it's done. Mike's gonna pour and I'm going to stand back as we filter. Oh God, please don't burn me. Ah! Look at the syrup. I figured it would. Look at all that clear filtered syrup. Look at all of the jars we got. Yay! Confetti! Yeah. That's done, right? I would say so. Oh God. Get it open. <laughs> Looky there. It's a good consistency, too. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. But for real, like, how is it? <laughs> Pretty good. So would you say this is worth all the effort? Yeah, worth it. <laughs> I think we're done here. 